Hey, what's up, ecosystem? Welcome back to Auto Transport Intel, the car shipping business channel. My name is Jay. You know, my goal every Tuesday night is to bring you another trade show level business presentation to you wherever you are because your automotive business deserves the latest in transportation news. And if you're busy, and I know you are, you can skip ahead. In a few minutes, I'm gonna give the show lineup. You'll know what to expect. And if you're watching on demand, you see the clickable time code links in the video description below. Go ahead and click on those, leave a comment. Remember to like, share, tell your friends. Thanks for watching ATI. It's a regular topic more consistent report grades and matching standards, smarter damage detection, and more accurate vehicle inspections, less arbitration, higher satisfaction, better condition reports. So tonight, we have Matt Arias, an arbitration expert from America's Auto Auction, plus Brian Shear, ConditionReports.com, Joe Miller, Auto IMS, Joel Hawk, Hogue Chevrolet, and Tim Scatalis of Max Digital, plus, of course, Ty Thompson of Cars on the Move. So please join the live chat, ask your questions, share your thoughts, grow your business, because it's Tuesday nights live on Auto Transport Intel. I'm Jay, your host. Welcome back to the show. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to Auto Transport Intel. It is Tuesday nights live. We are live, and you're here with me. Thank you so much for taking the time out of your busy schedule to join the community in the live chat on a Tuesday night here. Let me tell you what's going to happen tonight. First of all, if this is your first time here, I want you to feel welcome. First time, long time listener what have you. This is a community. This is a safe place. Ask your questions, share your thoughts, grow your business. Please do say hello. In a couple minutes, I'm going to say hello in the live chat. Then we're going to go into the quarter hour industry news. We've got news to share. And, uh, you know, there's always stuff in the news, whether it's EV or chip shortage or this or that. We're going to get to that stuff. Then what we're going to do is we're going to bring in Ty at about the 40 minute mark. And I know it goes quick. I hope it goes quick. Let me know. At the 40-minute mark, Ty Thompson, Cars on the Move. I'm going to bring him in because what we're going to do is we're going to introduce Matt Arias. Now, Matt was here last month on the IARA Roundtable Energy Show. And, man, he's got a lot to say about arbitration, condition reports. And it's a popular topic. Condition reports gets talked about in dealer panels, at auction meetings, and it is a non-stop issue, a lot like transportation. So it would make sense that we're going to do that on Auto Transport Intel with condition reports. We're going to then bring in Brian Shear and Joe Miller, uh, Brian Shear of ConditionReports.com, Joe Miller of Auto IMS. They're kind of the first panel. And then we're going to add another layer, as if that's not enough. We're going to add Joel Hawk of Pogue Chevrolet, Tim Scatalis of Max Digital, and round it out. And we're going to have this. We're going to go till 10 o'clock. There is a lot to talk about. If condition reports are dear to you, 
they're not good enough, the grades aren't consistent enough, what's with the damage detection, the vehicle inspections. By the way, where does vehicle inspection meet condition report? Can anybody fully answer that for me? I'll tell you what, do me a favor. Uh, do me, here's what you can do for me. Go ahead and leave a like. Thank you so much. Leave a like. And you see that share button right below the video. Click share, click copy, grab that YouTube link, send it to a friend. I know you know a dealer that is dissatisfied with what's going on. Dealers, buyers, consigners, they have a lot of thoughts on this. Tell them this is your chance. Come over to Auto Transport Intel, jump in the live chat, join this group. You can do it. Oh, and there it is. You can even... Thank you so much, Ty. Ty is already ringing the cowbell. ATI to the moon. Diamond hands. Thank you so much, Ty. Thanks for your help. This is going to be a great show. This is an important topic. Share it. After that, here's what we're going to do. We're going to be right back into the live chat. I can't wait to talk to you. You must be exhausted worrying about delivering on the daily schedule, making sure everyone knows where to find the cars they need, knowing exactly where and when the cars need to go, and ensuring customers will get them on time. Vlog uses the most advanced technologies to ease your worries. It shows you where each and every car is and tracks their entire delivery process from start to finish. Vlog can also help optimize your logistics and processes. It can even notify you in real time of any vehicle exceptions. And the best part is, you can start immediately with no setup required. Vlog is a ready-to-use service available on the web and mobile phone. You can get started today at vlog.io. What are you having trouble tracking? OEM, auction, dealer, carrier, rail, port, Roro, fleet. Vlog virtual asset tracking solutions helps you manage your vehicles in real time, visit vilog.io. So let's do this. Let's go into the live chat. That way we can get to industry news um, and see if we can get there faster. Than you. Okay, so if, if you were here last week, check your watches. We're going to try to get to the interviews on time. We need tie at 840. We got 32 minutes. So we got to keep moving. All right, John Cochran is in here first. Good evening, everyone, from the Toledo area heading to Chicago. What's up, John? Thanks for saying hello. John is on the road. It is official. He's picking up cars. He's an ATI fan. And thank you, John, for saying hello and let us know what's going on with you. And also, you know that put your name in, put your company in, put your email, your services, whatever it is. There's free advertising in the live chat on Auto Transport Intel. What is a condition report? I don't know. Holy smokes, Ty. What? Wait, what? What's a condition report? We're going to talk about that. It's the condition of the vehicle. John says, oh, and Vance, it's a CYA document. Very good, Vance. What's going on? Super Dispatch is here. What's up, ATI crew? Good to be back on a Tuesday night. Thank you so much. Kimberly is here. Welcome to Tuesday Night Live. What's going on, Kimberly? Please say hello. Please say hello to Kimberly. Please say hello to the crew. Uh, Joe Miller is here. Now, you are seeing, you're seeing the live chat on your screen, but I had to go back, right? You know what's going on. Joe Miller, hey, Ty, hey, John Vance, Super Dispatch, and the world. <laughs> what is up, Joe? Brian Shear, what's going on? Brian's here, too. Brian Joe's like, what's a condition report? What are you talking about? Um, and Vance Mattis is saying, hello, it's been a while. That's so cool, man. Well, you knew, but you knew we'd be here, and that's what's great. Mark Grodeke, hey, looking forward to seeing tonight's panel. Me too. Me too, Mark. Um, it's a PYA. <laughs> uh, Carlos Braxton, ACB Logistics. What's going on? Carlos is in the house. Um, and let's see here. What else do we have happening in the live chat? Oh, Silver Mint's here. How many condition reports does a car get before it hits the buyer? And which one matters to who? What's up, ATI fam? I love it. Because I keep saying... I, and I'm waiting patiently. The carrier's vehicle inspection report and then the auction and deal or buyer condition report, I know they need to mesh, do they? Because it seems like once the once the carrier does the vehicle inspection report and the car gets to point B, ha, eh, we don't need that anymore. That that pesky piece of paper. 
So uh, it's, it's a question I have. And I hope to get an answer. Looking forward to it. Uh, what else we got here? Chris Chamberlain is here. What's going on? Hey, everyone. Happy Tuesday. LOL Silverman CR at the auction. And then here at the CarMax. Um, yes. We know that... Uh, Starting to get, we're starting to get used. We're starting to know everybody's schedules. We don't even need GPS anymore. We know where everyone's at. Nick Medor, what's going on? Oh, and Chris, that's too nice. Thank you. Chris is ringing the cowbell. I sure do appreciate that. Thank you, Chris. Man, that means a lot. Um, we've got because I'll tell you what, the uh, the travel schedule. We're trying to we're trying to maintain a travel schedule, and uh, it's a burden. So thank you so much. Oh, wait a minute. Where are we at? Oh, hey. Uh, Michael Vidal, good evening from the crew. From Crew Transportation. What's up, Michael? Thanks for saying hello. Thanks for tuning in. That's awesome. Can't wait to hear this show. 15 years arbitration Mannheim. Wow, excellent. All right, you'll be our... So, Chris, you'll be our fact checker. Because everybody needs a good fact checker. And there's an app for that. <laughs> Pesky piece of paper. <laughs> exactly. Transport CR app. Well done. Well-placed advertising. And dude, Ron, oh my gosh, Ron. Wow. Wow, Ron. Hello from beyond. Awesome place to be, ATI. Thank you, Ron. NYC Traffic, Inc. Man, that's incredible. Ron, um, you know, as I, I, I say it all the time, I really appreciate it. And I think about, me and Ty, talk about... The, the way this community has grown. I'm talking to you right now, Ron, because you Ron has, has has had the chance to really express that he enjoys watching the growth of this channel, and I appreciate that. Um, and that is, you know, it's a journey, right? And we're still on this journey, and we're lucky to be on the journey. And 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 for for this specific journey, it's every Tuesday night. The other days of the week, of course, are their own little journeys. So there's almost like a mini series or a saga. But thank you, Ron, for being a part of the journey. May the journey continue, right? All right, man, that's awesome. Uh, Dominic Santini is here. What is going on? Silvermint, no problem so far. Yeah, by the way, mic check, one, two, three. How are we doing? I think we're okay. I think we're good. All right, I'll tell you what. We're, we're at 8.13, and I, I've always run out of time, so I'm just going to go ahead and close the live chat. Well, I'm not closing it. It's going to keep going. Keep Keep ringing the bell and doing your thing. Ask your questions. Share your thoughts. Grow your business. We're going to go into industry news right after this. You're not going to want to miss it. You know the value of a hard day's work because you're out there living it. Long hours, hard days, and a dollar that doesn't stretch as far as you'd like. But what if you had more time at home? What if you had more money at the end of the month? Where is it that your mind wanders on long, open roads? What is it that nags you at night? How could your life be better? More money, more freedom, less stress. What if I told you I could help you spend less time on the road while making more money? What if I told you that you could plan your next trip in under two minutes? Both of these things are true with Dispatch Center. Turn the corner with us. Start your next chapter today. Save valuable time finding the right loads faster. That's Dispatch Center by Superflow Systems. Get logged in, get signed up to make your load management life better. Visit DispatchCenter.com. Hey, they're by, speaking of, there's Mark ringing the bell. <laughs> Route scout your trips to make more money. Go to di Have you been to DispatchCenter.com? Go to DispatchCenter.com. Joe Miller, I get all the feels from this ad. It's practically like a Publix commercial. I thought it is a very good, very good ad. Well done. It's amazing. The power of advertising. Actually, I was talking, uh, I was talking to Kimberly about this. The like watching the games on Sunday, like the quality of the ads, it's amazing how they can just shift that quality. And um, I'm speaking of that, that Vroom ad where they, you know, it's something's going terrible and they want a shock treatment you, and then the, the, the shopper tilts sideways and they get to the better life. Brilliant. 
brilliant stuff. Uh, let's do some industry news. Okay, by the way, Mike, check one, two, three. I think we're okay. This is... Yeah, no, let me turn it down just a hair, because I, I don't want to distort. And thank you for your patience. Uh, yeah, no, it's just it's still, a, it's still just a hair loud. Let's go ahead and turn that down just a hair. Okay. This is show number 209 in a row. In a row. Uh, no, I don't need the clapper. In a row on a Tuesday night, show number 209. Better condition reports. Really excited to have this show. Better condition reports. Me, I've sat in, me personally, I've sat in a lot of conferences and sessions where I've, I've heard transportation get brought up and then it just kind of, there's an ellipse and people look at each other and then they move on because there's no way to resolve that. And in fact, oftentimes there isn't a transportation expert sitting there at the disposal, as it were. In this case, condition reports get talked about a lot by dealers, consigners, auction reps, folks that really know a lot about it. But it's so complicated and maybe impossible to solve that it just gets passed around. They kick the can. You've seen it. I know you've seen it. So we're going to try not to kick the can tonight. We have Matt Arias. He was on the show a month ago. He's from America's Auto Auction. He's an arbitration expert. He's our featured speaker tonight. Because you know that, again, so the carrier gets the phone out. Shoot some photos, does some dots, does some vehicle inspection stuff, yada, yada, yada. And then what happens? Or the dealer, the buyer is at is on their app at the uh, digital auction, as it were. And then, but do, does that app meet the other app? Do these apps connect? The auto transport industry ecosystem, as I've identified it, OEMs, auctions, dealers, shippers, services, brokers, carriers, equipment, regulations, and loads, tonight show most of it. Uh, because the condition report is central to what it is that we're doing. A? Back of the store, front of the store, auto transport intel is the store, and we go to back to the transport parking lot, we go to the front where the cars are being sold. It's the whole enchilada. It's the year of the hybrid, where digital meets physical. I've been saying this for months, right? But I started saying it before it was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So now I'll have to, I guess, I guess in 2022, we'll have to figure out what 2022 is. Because when the auction is a packed house, you'll find Ty in the clubhouse at Thai Transport Guy. Go find him in the clubhouse. Why find him? Well, are you trying to get started in auto transport? Lots of questions. So many questions about starting a business and the, all the technical stuff that we lose track of the part that the buyer and the shipper is focused on. We don't want to do that. This newbie to car hauling, thank you for your shows and all the people you have on to make people like me smarter and not make bad choices. Well, thank you. Ramble on, I say. You know, Cars on the Move, where Ty connects dealers, auctions, and carriers. Do you know why Ty spends so much time connecting dealers, auctions, and carriers? Because that's where the cars are. That's who needs the cars, and that's who moves the cars? Let's connect them. That's what we're going to do tonight. Um, how about this one? I was at the dealer auction this morning and continue to be amazed at the soaring vehicle prices. Here's a snapshot of a Ram diesel truck with 170,000 miles. Sold for 40500 After the auction fees, dealer paid 41 plus. Shocking. And true. And if you need a nine-car hauler, we're connecting dealers, auctions, and carriers. And we do it every week on Auto Transport Intel. Thanks for tuning in and being a part of it. Really appreciate that. Send us your photos. There's John Cochran. Got mail? Yes. Thank you, John. Send in your photos. Send in your company info. You can email me, autotransportintel at gmail.com. I appreciate it. We can make news out of your info. 
Thank you, National Vehicle Transporters Alliance, for sharing information. Absolutely. For example, salvage yards see a boost in business with fewer new cars in the market. Ain't she a beaut? <laughs> uh, Cape Cod Car Mechanics buried as new car prices continue to reach record highs. Another trend of the pandemic, more people are keeping their cars longer and choosing to repair them. Keeping car mechanics busy. Did you hear this? IAA launches a transport service, really? Which enables buyers to digitally order transportation for purchased vehicles at the time of checkout or post payment. IAA Transport eliminates the process of manually booking transportation for purchased vehicles. No phone calls, separate invoices, manual follow up. In addition, the service provides the assurance that IAA is responsible for the vehicle movement. Transport can be ordered at the time of payment. Well, hey, man, I know a uh, weekly show about auto transport that, uh, okay. All right, Jay. Uh, FedEx deliveries to ship autonomously in Texas via Aurora and Picard partnership. I know it's not cars, but I'm bringing it up. I still got to do that occasionally. I got to bring up, you know, something that could be down the road. Tesla drivers can now request a full self-driving beta with press of a button. That's not the point. What the point is, whatever, wait a minute. Yeah. Okay, so what happens if smart summon gets so smart that you can summon hundreds of miles? I'm just asking. Okay, Jay. This is how you get your car shipping business news. Whether it's comfortable or uncomfortable, it is here on Auto Transport Intel. You can put it up on the big screen. Thank you so much for doing that. And let's do this. I'll tell you what. Get your buzzers ready because here's what we're going to do. It is now time to play Are You a Car Shipping Guru? Now, on Tuesday nights at approximately 8.30, oh good, we're a few minutes early, we do the five questions. We're going to do five questions hosted by Larry, the Quotify Llama. Alexa, open Quotify! we got five questions, and you can still play the game to win. You go to dispatchcenter.com forward slash ask Larry. Look for it in the live chat. That link is coming up. Thanks, Sky. Oh, and I'll tell you what, Sky. Here's the really good news. We got part two of the news. The really hard news coming up after the questions, after the break. So this is the fun part. Click on the link. It's in the live chat. Submit your answers. We're just going to do the five questions. You know how this works. And then on Thursdays at 1 on Dispatching Live, we do the reveal of the answers. Question one. Here we go. Which of the following should be notated on a vehicle inspection? Dent in roof, vehicle mileage, illuminated warning lights, or all of the above? Play now. You can play in the live chat. Just throw your guesses up there or click on the link and start submitting your answers. I'll tell you, this game is actually way harder than it looks. I have yet to get five out of five. So thank you so much, Larry. Larry, the Quotify Llama. And don't forget, go to autotransportquoter.com. Stop guessing. You know, somebody needs a car shipped and they need a quote. Stop guessing. Go to transportautoquoter.com. We got all. We got all. All right. I think we all got that one. Here we go. Next one. Good job. What is the most appropriate carrier pay amount? To ship a 2018 Ford F-150 from Tuscaloosa, Alabama to Boise, Idaho. 650, 925, 1325, or 1765. What a dispersion on this, Larry. Well done. Tuscaloosa. I'm just trying to distract you while I get the right answer. Tuscaloosa to Boise. I don't know, man. F-150, I'm going to go with 1325. You know, Larry, the transport auto quotify llama. Go to auto transport transportautoquoter.com. Larry knows his stuff. He knows what it takes to get the vehicle moved. All right now, somebody's like, wait, what's the domain again? TAQ, transportautoquoter.com. Like I said, it was very clear. Um, Larry knows his stuff. He knows what it takes to get the vehicle moved. 
It's not going to make the shipper totally happy. It's not going to make the carrier totally happy. It's right in the middle. Man, everyone's got 1325. That's incredible. All right, here we go. Question three. Let's see. A BOC3 is a form used to designate a blank with the FMCSA. Is that an insurance company, a process agent, address change, or company name change? This is a very good one, actually. I happen to know the answer to this uh, because of DOT compliance on Wednesdays. But, man, it could be any of those. Because, you know, what? how do you know the name of the form based on what it does? And Joe Miller with 565 potatoes. Fantastic joke. <laughs> Silver Mint. <laughs> Thank you, Silver Mint. Okay. Ooh, Rob. Out of the box. Man, Rob is three for three. Here we go. What is the most appropriate carrier pay amount? To ship a non-running 2016 Honda Pilot from St. Louis, Missouri to Cambridge, Massachusetts. 568, 29, 10, 10, 35. St. Louis, Cambridge. I'm going to go with uh, Honda Pilot. Non-running. I'm going to go with 10, 35. I'm going to go with the high one because it is, it's an in-op. And I need that money. Uh, man, everybody's getting it. Man, this is... This must be the high. Sue is going to, Sue, because on Thursdays when we do the answers, Sue, my co-host on Dispatching Live, she had four out of five last week. She's going to get this one. Are you going to get this one? Anybody got a live guess on the uh, right there? All right, we got one more. Yep, Rob's got it too. Man, everybody said, Silver Mint is just spot on. Look at that. Here we go. Question five. According to Insurify, the blank blank is currently the most popular vehicle in both Florida and Vermont. Ford F-150, Toyota Corolla, Lexus LS, Buick Enclave. Wow. Look at that. And the stumper right at the end. Oh, my gosh. How do you know this one? No Googling. Um, and thanks for joining. If you're on the podcast and you're listening, thank you so much. If you don't have the podcast... We'll share the link. We'll get that in here. Uh, the podcast is growing all the time. And, uh, yeah, you can follow the podcast. Here's the link. Sleep is what Vance has as a guess. It's perfect. Um, I personally... Lexus? I don't know what... I don't know how to guess. I like the, I like the Lexus guess. Uh, anyways, here's what you want to do. Go ahead and submit. Thank you so much, Larry. These are great questions. Submit your answers. You think you got the answer? Go to dispatchcenter.com forward slash ask Larry. Submit your answers. Play to win. Um, and don't forget, go to autotransportintel.com. Click on sign up. Become an ATI insider. I've also got the link right here. Here's what I'm going to do. Sign up with ATI. Why do you do that? Because you can talk to Ty, you can get the email blast, be part of the community, find out what's going on, see what we can do for you, whether you're a carrier or a broker or a dispatcher. I got to say, I'm so thankful, getting more and more emails all the time, thanking us for this channel and the experts that show up here and the information. I love it and I can't do it alone. So thank you all so much for being a part of it and tuning in to Auto Transport Intel. It is now time. I am going to take a quick break. It is 8.30, so we're right on time for this. I'll tell you, right after this, we're going to come back for Industry News Part 2. Stick around. Are you completely stressed out from all the calls and the contracts and the verification of loads when nobody answers the phone? Call Murphy Auto Dispatch Services today. Murphy Auto Dispatch Services has over 15 years of experience in the transport industry. We are your office while you are on the road. We book, we verify, and we bill out your loads for you. We have an excellent accounting staff and an even better dispatch team. Give us a call today at 417-273-0021. Or if you want to email me, it's murphyautotransport31 at yahoo.com. Give us a call today.
AutoIMS and ConditionReports.com are pleased to introduce the Transport CR mobile app. Auctions, consigners, and dealers who engage independent transporters now have an affordable tool to hold all parties accountable when unexpected damages arise. Inspection photos, geotagging, date and timestamps, and user-specific authentication all ensure transparency and accountability. Install the Transport CR app or contact info at conditionreports.com. An inspection, condition reports, and authentication tool holding all parties accountable. Install the Transport CR app or email info at conditionreports.com. Thank you guys so much for joining me. If, if you just got here, man, we've only been 30 minutes into the show. Only 25% done so far. And I'll tell you what, I see it. Thank you so much, Super Dispatch, for ringing the cowbell tonight. Move cars faster. NN Carrier Shipper Solutions, Powerful TMS, APIs, Marketplace, and Mobile App Super Dispatch. Thanks. ATI for helping to keep the industry informed, educated, and thinking about the future. Thank you so much. We sure do appreciate it for your participation, support, live chat. Thank you so much for that. That is amazing, and it's incredible. The support rolling in tonight, it is amazing, and it really helps um, because we are we're looking to round out the rest of this year. We've got some amazing stuff happening, um, but it does. It takes a lot of work, so thank you so much. Let's go into, oh, not that one. Let's go to this. Part two, industry news continued. Ford is going all in on electric vehicles with $11 billion investment. The number seems to just keep climbing. Every time I open the newspaper, Ford to spend $7 billion on EV campuses in Kentucky and Tennessee. The outlay is the largest single manufacturing investment in companies 118-year history. You're hearing about this? This is huge news. Uh, let's see. They are calling it... Where's my... Uh, okay, there we go. They are calling it Blue Oval City. $7 billion and create nearly 11,000 jobs to build EV electric vehicles and batteries in Tennessee and Kentucky, including a 3,600-acre mega campus northeast of Memphis called Blue Oval City. That will include Ford's first new vehicle assembly plant in more than 50 years. South of, Saint, south of Louisville, Ford will build a 1,500-acre battery park under its Blue Oval SK joint venture with battery supplier SK Innovation. The site will comprise two battery plants making advanced lithium-ion batteries. Amazing stuff. It's huge news. Uh, Sonic Automotive to acquire 33-store RFJ Auto Partners in $700 million deal. The purchase set to close in December is expected to add $3.2 billion in annual revenue to Sonic's business. Man, the mergers, acquisitions, and investments just keep on coming. It's amazing. Let's see. RFJ's auto brand portfolio made up of Alfa Romeo, Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, Ram, Chevy, GMC, Buick, Lexus, Toyota, Ford, Nissan, Hyundai, Honda, and Mazda. RFJ Auto also has a group of used vehicle-only stores across several states. It's all about used right now. Sonic said the deal will add six new states to its footprint. Idaho, Indiana, Missouri, Montana, New Mexico, and Washington. It will also have five new brands, Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, Ram, and Mazda. But new vehicle sales still stall in September. Sales volume is expected to be down nearly 26% from last September. And available supply in dealer lots is now 58% lower than last September. That's down 1.4 million units. I kept saying, I didn't know how. I didn't know, actually. But I was saying that if you're working new and you're good, uh, you know, I mean, things, I, you know, mm, okay. All right, next. Uh, horror chip shortage effects as nearly half of car buyers are ready to delay their purchase. Ouch. A survey conducted in Kelly Blue Book. Nearly half of those currently in the market looking to buy a new vehicle are ready to delay the purchase because of the global chip shortage. Demand destruction. We heard it. Thank you, Paul Machine. It's real. Americans are going to 
they're going to extreme lengths to buy a car amid a lingering shortage. Matt Jones of True Car, he says their data shows more people are turning off search filters and searching the entire nation. Oh, you can't see it on your screen. Here's why that's important. Okay, wait a minute. If you're in Georgia and you were searching your southeast region before, but now with what's going on, you're searching the nation. Uh, transportation much? Yes, yes. In the used car space, absolutely. Tesla, Elon Musk, says good chip capacity coming next year. So, uh, this would be a good Larry question. Let's do it. Let's see if we can do this. Do you think Elon Musk is right when he says good chip capacity is coming next year? Can we get, you know, can we get a month? Maybe not. New forecast says chip shortage to cost the car industry $210 billion. That number keeps going up. Crazy. Wait, wait a minute. $210 billion? $200. It's insane. Carrier vessel shortage hits car importers. Really? That too? Chip shortage wasn't enough. UK offers thousands of visas to foreign truckers to ease driver shortage, growing alarm within the government about a disruption. This is just getting out of hand. Okay, well, I'll tell you what. We do know this. This is for sure. This is a sure thing. Uh, next week. Is it next week? Is that right? Today is... What is today? Yeah, Friday is the first. Wow, next week week amazing next week is finally it's here it's the automotive logistics and supply chain global live event october 5th through 7th it's actually a hybrid event so you can attend physically in detroit it's the year of the hybrid you can attend physically in detroit or you can attend virtually from wherever and um automotive logistics and supply chain global live we do want to talk about it we are auto transport intel is a media partner of automotive logistics thank you so much automotive logistics what, a, what an incredible organization global supply chain and finished vehicle logistics information and so here's what i want to do i want to take you to let's go to the website what what i want you to do this is the this is the the website live that's right go to automotive logistics dot media you can go there now and when you go to automotive logistics i mean i'm gonna grab the link here you can see it this is real this is live, and it's happening. So I just grabbed that link, automotivelogistics.media. You'll see it in the live chat now. Maybe now. How about now? There we go. And then you go to automotivelogistics.media. What you do is, when you get here, go over to Events. Click on Events. As you hover it, you already start seeing the stuff. Click on Events. And then go over to Automotive Logistics and Supply Chain Global Live. Click on that. All right, and now we're here. We're in the live link. This is this is the event. This is the event page. I mean, Nissan, IAC Group, Honda, Volkswagen, Toyota. They really pack in. Uh, man, huge. This this event, global finished vehicle logistics. And go do this. Go click on agenda. And you do you want to book now? And if you do book now, we've got a code ATI fifteen. You can get fifteen percent off of uh, your registration that's ATI 15 and here's the here's the uh, event look at Tuesday night welcome reception starting on the 6th on Wednesday October 6th check this out we got networking meetings finished vehicle logistics raising the quality with Dennis Manns anyways there is so much to it this is gonna be an amazing event and so we're gonna be I think we're gonna be going live Ty are we gonna be going live oh and oh my gosh Let's do this. Let's go back to industry news. Let's finish up the news because we have uh, more to say. In fact, I'm ru I'm running out of time. I see the clock. Uh, I see the clock a ticking. Uh, four times a week, Tuesday nights live is the beginning of your auto transport intel week. 
Now, actually, tomorrow we don't have DOT compliance. Normally, every Wednesday we have DOT compliance. We have how we doing, and we look at uh, cars getting crushed. That's, that's not what we want. On Dispatching Live, we have our Thursdays at noon with Sue, where we, yes, we, we help. We have education. We have training. On Fridays, connecting dealers, auctions, and carers. Well, check it out. This Friday, we actually have Christopher Ludwig of Automotive Logistics. He's back. He's coming back for another live interview ahead of the show, ALSC Live. That's your hashtag in Detroit. We're going to have Christopher Ludwig on Friday on Cars on the Move. You know, last week was Beyond the Fuel Island. We were talking about if you're growing your auto transport business, if that's for you, go check that out. That was a great show. This is cool. Tomorrow, tomorrow on Wednesday, September 29th at noon, taking over the DOT compliance spot, we have a live Black Widow special event. New features release. Meet new members of the team. See the new features, check out the live demo, ask questions. It's going to be incredible. That's tomorrow at noon central. Join us right here on Auto Transport Intel. And don't forget, uh, it's out. You can go to usecarweek.biz agenda. Click on the agenda because Used Car Week is coming up mid November in Las Vegas. Oh, yeah, at the Red Rocks. That's where you want to be. That's where you want to be. You want to go there, you want to sit in the sessions. Get the information, and then, uh, oh, and they have special events, right? Like 40 under 40. Auto remarketing is 40 under 40. Used Car Week is November 15th through 18th at Red Rock Resort in Vegas. The first block is the uh, pre-owned con, auto fin con, repo con. The second block, National Remarketing Conference, the NRC, with the National Auto Venture Investors Conference, the Navicon. Man, there's so much to it. You know. You know Used Car Week is big. You know that this is the Car Shipping Business Channel. And you know it's Tuesday Night Live. Oh, it's 842. I'm two minutes late. I got to go get Ty. So I'll do, I'll do this. Watch this. Stick around. When we come back, we're going to have Ty. We're going to be bringing Matt. We're going to talk about better condition reports. And you're not going to want to miss it. Is your current vehicle imaging process producing inconsistent images? Frustrating? Time-consuming? At the mercy of another vendor's schedule? Well, it doesn't have to be. Black Widow Imaging provides a simple system to capture high-quality images of your vehicles in seconds. Simply align the driver's side tire with the floor strength. Stop on the floor plate to scan your vehicle code and capture the exterior images. It's that easy. It's also equipped with an interactive 360 degree interior camera option so your customers don't miss any details. The results are fast, consistent 4K images that are delivered to your website in minutes. Let us show you how easy your imaging process can be anywhere in the global supply chain. Visit blackwidowimaging.com to schedule a live demo. Black Widow Imaging provides high resolution 4K images for OEMs, auctions, dealers, carriers, rail, port, fleet, insurance, transportation, and more. Schedule your live demo. Visit blackwidowimaging.com. Um, there are the links in the live chat. And uh, mic check one, two, three. I think we're still okay on the audio and the video. Let me know if you can see me and hear me okay. And we are gearing up for our next guest. Okay, we're only four minutes late. I'm, I mean, I'm trying. I'm trying. I'm riding that tricycle as fast as I can. Here we go. We're going to bring in Ty Thompson, Cars on the Move. Ty, can you see me and hear me okay? I can. How are you? I'm doing good, man. Did we land the plane? Are we here? Yeah, I'm here. Uh, it was close. Like last week, I <laughs> barely made it. It was awesome, <laughs> so If you man. didn't see me hyping up the live, live, live chat doing high fives, <laughs> it's because I was this close to making it on time. But uh, Great job, really excited man. about tonight's show. Really excited about uh, all the things that are going on with ATI. Some of the things coming up, the automotive yeah. logistics. Yeah. Really well, excited. High five. Uh, hey, high five to you, right? 
We are, we, this is a team effort, and, um, and man, look at the live chat was going crazy, ringing the bell, yes, man. And then that show last week, with the experts in the ATI community, wow. Well, um, the CR, uh, tonight, Matt, I got to spend some time with Matt when I was in San Antonio. He did it, uh, <clears throat> I don't know, I could get it wrong, but I think it was a closed door meeting. Uh, and I got to spend some time with him before that, but he is an incredible individual just as a person, but to hear the knowledge that he has when it comes to the condition reports, everybody needs to go ahead and just sit down, buckle up because Matt is going to genuinely, sincerely educate us tonight. And I'm excited about that. And that's, that's for, because of you, Jay, by the way, you, You, you're the guy, you know, Hey, thanks Ty, but. Hey, thanks, Jay. So thank you, Jay, for taking the time to put this together tonight. That's well, it's really good. Thank you very much. And I and I, I think that because what I really try to do and everybody helps, and that's the live chat, too. If you've got a show idea, let us know what you think we should talk about next. Send it to autotransportintel at gmail.com because we hear things brought up from time to time. That's what we need to, to shine the light on. And, and it's, 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 it's tempting to go with another popular topic or something trendy. This ends actually hard. This condition reports one, this is hard. This it show could hard. go in many directions. Yeah. Well, I don't know what's going to happen. This is, what's, this is what's fun because, you know, I was thinking about the show tonight uh, earlier today. And I was thinking about... You know, when you're a transport company and the auction or the dealer calls you and says, hey, I need you to pick this car up that you just delivered. I need you to take it back. What? And I need it like in the next hour. Why? So, <clears throat> you, you know, you're, you're the guy that's always yapping about uh, this, this transport. Nobody really talks about condition report arbitration. Arbitration is a huge part of transportation by the way. <laughs> but I'm really excited to hear what Matt has to say. So I'm going to go ahead. Well, and, uh, and I'll just say this on what you just said, because I said this to you earlier, is that what happens when you're new to auto transport and somebody says, yeah, you can't pick it up because of PSI. And you're like, what the, you know, what, who cares? What do you mean? Is the car doesn't there have any not? air pressure in it? PSI? Right, exactly. Isn't that <laughs> the car is there where you can't pick it up. And then you hear this word arbitration and you start to realize, oh my gosh, there are levels to everything. This isn't just drive around and pick up and deliver vehicles. It gets way more complicated than that. So on that note, so let's do it. Let's bring in, uh, I'll switch to the live chat here. Say hello again. Oh yeah, here he is. Um, we have got, oh, you know what I need to do? Before he gets it, there we go. I got all the stuff off the screen. So Matt Arias, he is joining right now. This is the Better Condition Report show. So, around pick yeah, up and get comfortable, like Ty said. Get comfortable. Make sure you've got all of your food ready. And so you can just hang out and you can get a bite to eat. Say hello in the live chat. Let's see, Sky in here. Yes, oh my God, CR is an arbitration ma major headache for the dealer. Vance Mattis had a room delivery refused because AC didn't work. So here's what's, here's what's, and I can hear that, Ty, but the audience cannot because I muted it, which is good. What's happened, so I think, I think he got it. I think Matt found it. He got it. All right, here we go. Yep, but I'm all over. And this is why, you know, sometimes I mute. I leave myself muted. Sometimes I get lucky and I get it right. Here we go. Without further delay, this is Matt Arias of what America's is... Auto Auction. He's an arbitration expert. Matt, can you see us and hear us okay? I can see both of you very well. Looking good. I like the hairstyle there, Ty. Hey, I'm going with this new look. Whoa, no, beard. <laughs> No shave November's right around the corner. How, how did you grow a beard so fast? I'm jealous. I don't know. I had to get it white. Oh, yeah. That's amazing. I don't know. How have you been, man? I really... Is he? Think about you and I talk about you probably more than you know. 
Well, okay. a lot more than you know, but I brought okay. your name up today, as a matter of fact. I was at, I swung into America's in Kansas City, and I can't remember the guy's name, the arbitration guy. There's Kansas a lot of, City. Yeah, we have a handful of folks that help out. Yeah. In Kansas anyway. City, all over, yeah. And he knew you because you trained him, I think he said maybe in Texas somewhere, Dallas, but mm -hmm. anyway, you have, uh, Matt has an incredible reputation, integrity, ethics, morals, values. Matt is very well known in the industry. So thank you. Here we go. Yeah, no, hey, it's a pleasure to be on. And I really wish I could have been on the other one, but um, I got bogged down, but I apologize. But hey, I'm over here. Let's talk. Uh, what do you guys want to talk about? Arbitration, CR? Mm -hmm. We want to talk. Well, first, I'll, I'll tell you what. I want to find out um, if it's okay and if it's not just in that stop. But uh, when I met you, you were or what not in San Antonio. You were doing a conference. Can you tell us about that? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, that was the uh, International Automotive Marketers Alliance, and it was their summer roundtable. So uh, my involvement with that, aside from uh, uh, meetings with consigners and, and other folks is uh, I'm the co-chair of the um, standards committee and then I'm on the board as well but um, that meeting that, that I had was all standards committee stuff so we were you know we were going over uh, kind of game planning um, one recruiting so for anybody who's listening and wants to be part of that um, hit me up later uh, but we were going over EVs we're going over ADAS and then, of course, all the different things that have popped up pre-COVID, post-COVID and, and, you know, um, you know, buying cars from afar, the condition reports. And then you know, there's always going to be a little bit of an issue between what a consigner wants versus what an auction does versus what the buyer wants. And remove the auction from the process and you've got two different, you know, viewpoints opposing each other. And. Uh, more disclosures, less disclosures, what's legal, what's not legal, what's ethical, what's, you know, and it's, and that's, that's my dance. I'm, you know, spinning the plates, I'm juggling, you know, hurting cats, whatever you want to call it. I'm, that's, that's part of what we do. So and I'm lucky enough to have Doug Turner uh, as part of the deal as my co-chair, because that man brings such a perspective, both buying, selling, and of course, as an auction operator, he's, he's done it all. And, uh, uh, it helps kind of reality test stuff for us. It's it's a good time. Okay, so let's unpack some of this. <clears throat> I heard the word standard multiple times. Yes. Explain standard. What are you What are you talking about? <laughs> That's good. Standard could be. Okay, so I'm a big fan of the min max theory, right? Whatever minimum standard we allow becomes the maximum we'll ever get out of anybody, you know, and that, that goes for say a selling disclosure. And I'd say 99% of all the sellers, sellers, uh, both consigners on the, on the remarketing side for say banks, repo, you know, um, fleet companies and what have you. And then of course the whole car stuff, the, the dealers and all that, um, they want to sustain or improve their relationship with their would be buyers. So they will stand behind cars, but then there's that 1% back it up. There's that 8%. There's 8% of those people. <laughs> and those are the ones that, you know, in the, in the Pareto analysis world, you know, those are the ones that make up that 80% of, or actually, you know, the majority of those, where it's now plausible deniability versus fraudulent omission. You know, when we're constantly, instead of policy, now it's policing. So that's kind of the role that um, I help tighten up. And it's all for the sake of uh, the transparency of the... Um, transaction okay so the stand so the standard is is here here's how we look at a car is that is that what you're saying yeah this well, is the way we look at a vehicle ahead. and and so you know if you were kind of want to throw an analysis on that that value stream of an auction you've got there's the check-in process right so you know the born with data on the vehicle equipment options and all that good stuff and then then there's the condition report itself where you know it's that 38 minute, 28 minute, whatever, you know, uh, 10 second <laughs> walk around a vehicle for all the dents, ding scratches and all that stuff to help document. And then of course it'll double as a recon estimate or could double as a recon estimate. And it's also an insurance policy for the owner of the vehicle and the auction too. That's kind of how this all started, but then the buyer gets their hands on it and they can make informed decisions off of it, but not swear off of it. That's the one thing that we try to do is say, Hey, wait a minute, this is not a certification. 
it's great information to have, but you need more, right? The powertrain is an example. And later on, either this year or early next year, uh, America's Auto Auction, and I'm not trying to plug it, but I will, um, is that yeah, we're, gonna have something, we're gonna have something that kind of helps fill that gap. Um, and I know, you know, the mechanical wherewithal of the vehicle is super important, especially for a lot of the buy here, pay here's. And I think I've got that licked for everybody. So I'm really excited that it's not ready yet, but it'll be there. That's some a new feature, maybe in 2022 coming out. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm, I'm not, you know, obviously I want it right versus right yeah, now, yeah. but I also want to do it right now, but um, you know, just building, you know, building what I want to build for this, um, and the technology that's going to go behind it and how it's going to convey to the buyer and to the seller is going to be life-changing. You know, um, one thing that I'm not a big fan of right now is the way a grade can be manipulated. And it's unfortunate that the grade on the cosmetic side, you know, based on the algorithm can go up or down depending on who's behind that condition report. And it's not necessarily the inspector, it's who's telling that inspector, which is, you know, not really talked about, but I have zero guilt throwing that out there. Cause I'm, I'm pretty, I'm sick of it. Anyway. Well, what are you, so what are you talking about? So for example, I see a dent in the fender and it needs to be replaced, but the severity of replacing a panel versus say maybe body repair or maybe even PDR as best as possible. I'm downplaying the severity of that damage. If that happens wow. enough, the grade goes up. And what happens is you've got this artificial grade, then you've got this realistic grade from the buyers, right? Because mm -hmm. they're looking at the vehicle going, that's not a 4.2, that's more like a 2.9, you know, what's mm -hmm. going on here? And then all of a sudden that gap, the, the, the consigners go, well, man, that, that auction's market's way off. And this happened to me in 1999. And we're still dealing with this. I mean, I'm, I was blown away at like, so anyway, I'm gonna close that gap. We're going to rewrite some stuff with the standards committee and uh, we're going to tighten okay. that. So standards committee, <clears throat> the standards committee falls. So there's IARA, mm -hmm. right? And then there's, if I, if I, and this is all memory. So if I'm wrong, I'm sorry. But then is there in AAA? Yes. So standard? There, yeah, the National Auto Auction Association also has a standards committee and that's made up of auction people. And I'm okay. co-chair of that too. Oh, so you're on both. Mm -hmm. Wow. You're busy. <laughs> Keeps you going. <clears throat> yeah. yeah. You want to help I me? Mean, well, to make it easier, right? For the buyer and the seller is that, is that's the ultimate goal here, right? Right. Yeah. And, and for the auctions too. I mean, the auctions as that intermediary, you know, we're an auction house and, and we're trying to, you know, both sides of our mouth say, Hey, you know, seller this and we'll do right. And Hey, buyer this we'll do right. And sometimes, like I said, like a collision, you know, you've got a, you've got a problem where a seller maybe omitted some key information and a buyer is upset and it hits the arbitration policy and is valid. Well, it's an arbitration. Right. So you guys are like, I, I've been around a while and I, I always made good friends with the arbitration guy. And the reason was, is because that guy, when he needs something, he needs it pretty quick. Right. Well, so yeah, time is of the essence, you know, and that's something that, you know, in whatever pitch I make uh, in terms of risk mitigation, time is of the essence. So if you're a buyer, you buy a vehicle, that clock starts on day one, which is sale day. And at that point you've got, X amount of days, depending on the situation and depending on the sales channel to file that claim. And then of course there's the validity of that claim. You know, we have a dollar amount threshold, we've got a criteria. So like flood damage has specific criteria, uh, structural damage does. Then of course, powertrain, we put a price tag on that and that's $600 straight up wholesale. Mm. So so the <clears throat> as, I, as I'm listening to this, I'm looking at it from the standpoint of a, a transport guy, a dealer guy, an auction guy, an arbitration guy. Mm -hmm. they, and, and this is what's interesting. This is why I like Matt so much, because if you think about it, he's touching every piece that we touch, right? He's hitting the dealer. He's hitting the buyer, the seller. That's usually a dealer, mm -hmm. uh, wholesaler, possibly, right? And then you've got uh, the auction. That's Matt. And you've got the transport guy. So they're, they're all right here. And there's, so Matt has like, at, I bet at his office, I bet every arbitration guy in an auction has a manual, 
or is is that the right word, Matt? Well, I mean, policy. Well, there's the policy, you know, and and you know, the standard operating procedures may vary by auction company, but in all reality, <clears throat> the terms and conditions are, you know, the buyer and seller are both bound by them, and it's always referencing, at least it should be, and if you're an auction company listening to this and it's not in your T's and C's, always reference the latest version of the arbitration policy. Every once in a while, we were on a string there. Every year, we rewrote the thing, every year, and then it got kind of painful because it's like, I, why, why? You're just going to change it again. You know, why, why should I believe it? And so... Um, we backed off and really looked at it and said, are we just doing this to do it? And that answer is no, of course, but um, letting the policy marinate. But to your question is, yeah, they should revert back to the AAA policy. And then there's also local policies too. the auctions have their own titles, as an example. Um, any kind of, you know, municipal law or state law that might uh, supersede the policy. Any law does. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Well, going in, how are we on time, Jay? Oh, we're doing great. No, you guys are doing awesome. Keep going. Okay. So um, <clears throat> let's talk about the, the, the buyer, okay? Because this, this to me is, this isn't a new topic. We've, I mean, I remember simulcast uh, at 166 Springfield, Missouri, at their boat sale. They, would, they had this van, and they would take it, and they would do these off-site sales, right? So it's this online is not new. Is that it, true? That is it's correct. Been, been around a while. Oh, yeah. But things have changed, right, recently? Maybe in the last, what, two, five years? Well, I mean, some of these auction companies that own some of these fixed bid platforms or, you know, platforms like OVE as an example or Smart Auction, you know, they have their own technology and their way of uh, facilitating that transaction. But in all reality, it's seller, buyer, condition information, disclosures, and then hopefully no shenanigans on the back end. Right. And this is where it gets tricky because we're dealing with some people and some people don't maybe have integrity, right? They just, they got to uh, say, call it a lemon or a piece of junk. And I just need to get rid of this thing. I'll send it to the auction. Mm -hmm. There's one way around it, right? Which if, if, if the guy was honest, that you can tell me if I'm wrong, but as is, have you heard that? Well, <clears throat> so I changed that policy a couple of years ago. I, our, our committee, well, the committee did. Yeah. I say I, okay. but it's an us yeah. thing. Always. Yeah. Us thing. Um, but yeah, so as is does not exist in our world anymore. There's oh. versions of it. Well, yeah. So I changed it from as is, or we changed it from as is to limited arbitration because there are certain things that doesn't matter. You have to disclose structural damage as an example. Blood damage is another one any kind of title admin issue where it's branded or there's some history to it. There's some things that require disclosure, regardless of light. So green light, red light, you know, green, yellow, yellow by itself, powertrain. Doesn't matter. There's no such thing as, as is no arbitration. Now I say that as at, at a certain altitude with AAA, but local, there may be a local policy where, you know, XYZ Chevrolet is the big hitter there and they get to do whatever they want. They're bringing, you know, and they they stipulate, I don't want any arbitration risk or I don't want any other issue. I'm just going to put everything as is. They might have conditioned their would-be buyers to that fact that it is what it is. It breaks in both halves. You own both of them. You know, um, that still happens a lot, you know, and, and I can't, you know, I, if it works, then great. If it sets the appropriate expectation of would-be buyers, it's even better because that's what you want. You want that transparency. So... But from an AAA point, we just said limited arbitration. Yeah. So as an, and this is completely off topic, but as an America, America's auto auction, are you, do you fall under the IARA and the NAAA? So International Automotive Remarketers Alliance is, is a, a group of all the different big uh, consigners, small consigners too, but um, it, it really doesn't matter on volume. It's just, you know, they all bound together, um, and this is the 20th anniversary, actually, of um, a lot of these folks getting together. And it's been great because they produce some really good stuff. Uh, you know, CFPB is an example, um, a, a checkbook, a, back up, a playbook, so to speak, for that. And then um, 
you know, that helps the auctions with compliance and helps with a lot of other things. Uh, but they're not necessarily a governing body. Neither is NAAA in all reality, but NAAA is what sets the uh, arbitration policy and a lot of that guidance. And they're not just policy, but position statements too. One example would be the, uh, the uh, CR thing. And I know we're talking about CR is um, the position statement we call it the generic position statement for CR. It's, it's kind of long-winded, not necessarily a marketing pro here, but it is what it is. Help set that expectation of what it is versus what it's not and go from there. Okay, good. It's, well, uh, Jay, we're amazing. Okay? Yeah, it's amazing, the, Matt, your level of invested <laughs> passion and knowledge on this topic. I mean, yeah. it's, it, it's really awesome. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to bring in Brian and Joe, and I just, I, I highly encourage anybody in the live chat, if you've got, if you've got a question or a suggestion, uh, this is your opportunity to go in any direction that you want. We got, here's what we're going to do. We're going to be live for one more hour. Right now, I'm inviting Brian Shear of ConditionReports.com, and I've got Joe Miller of Auto IMS. And, all right, gentlemen, here we go. Brian, can you see us and hear us okay? I can. I can see part of your ponytail. Looks awesome. <laughs> Just part, though. Just it's, part of it. It's November. It's ponytail month. <laughs> no. I've got Not one November yet. yet. That's, yes, yes, yes. Which month is <laughs> ponytail <laughs> month? That's the month I'm looking for. What's up, Matt? October. What's up, fellas? Hey, Brian. It's in the evening, so you guys might see one of my kids running behind me or jump on me. So just a awesome. Warning. Awesome. It's a family show. Yeah. It's a family show. Family yeah. channel. <laughs> and Joe Miller, can you see us and hear us okay? Very well. Can you hear me okay? We can see you. We can hear oh, he's you. He's got a new background. Joe's got a new background there. Yeah. Yeah. Made like out of it. wood. It's the brand, baby. It's the brand. Built in partnership. Is that what it says? Yeah, that's our that is our client experience mantra. All right, I like it. Who is who is your client, Joe? Joe. So um, thanks for asking. Our our clients are both the auto auctions and the commercial sellers. So there's some dealers in the chat with some very colorful comments about condition reports and uh, um, some of the usual suspects out there. And we should talk about some of what they're saying because I. I don't know. I think the commercial sellers have their own perspective on it as well, as do the auctions. So, the source subject. Oh, so yeah. let's talk about it. This is a good place. So, who's got a? You're, you're saying buyers, dealers, right? They've they have something to say about condition reports. Well, the buyers are excuse me. Dealers are both buyers and sellers at the auction, right? And so. There is this concept of should, if I'm a dealer consigner, should I have a condition report? Uh, should I use a condition report? How am I marketing that car? Is it going to stay at the auction? Is it going to be marketed online and all of that stuff? Um, but uh, there's also the idea of the commercial seller. So if I'm, if I've got a repossession, I'm sending that car to the, the auction. If it's an off lease car, if it's a rental car, et cetera, et cetera. In many cases, I might have a person on site at the auction. I might not. In, in either case, I want an electronic condition report. I want to be able to market that car online. Um, I want to be able to represent it. I want to be able to price the car. So someone earlier in the chat, I think from the dealer community, said it's a CYA. Maybe from the transport community, it's a CYA, right? So we'll talk about transport CRs too. But um, I think everyone has an A to C, right? We all got a CRA. <laughs> it's a family show. I like that. That's good. <laughs> but there's a lot of other letters, right? Like if you're if you're a commercial seller, you need to 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 P your A, uh, which is for me is price, right? You you got to figure out what that car is worth. Um, and right now they're worth a lot, so it's not all that difficult. You're going to make some money. But um, in, in, especially in normal times, they use this condition report oftentimes without ever touching or smelling the car to understand everything that's on that car and the condition of it. So it's not just are there dents in the panels and broken glass and worn tires. They're also looking at the equipment. We're even seeing OBD2 uh, ports being read, engine codes, what's firing on the dashboard and all that uh, stuff. So 
um, the, the, the definition of what's a CR is also evolving, right? Especially right now with COVID, right? It's pushed us to where, you know, we're selling a much larger percentage of our vehicles online. So you have both buyers and the sellers there, depending on this condition report, and it's really hard to please both parties. Plus the condition report is just basically a cosmetic inspection. What Matt's doing in America is, and trying to push a more mechanical inspection to give more transparency to buyers online is definitely where we're gonna end up, right? So it's just a matter of how do we get there? So the challenge for the auction is, uh, how, what does it cost to collect that data, right? I mean, does anyone realize how expensive it is to do a condition report? And not to mention that nobody wants to pay for it, right? So what Matt's talking about doing is, let's pr provide the OBD2 read, let's provide more mechanical information so that people can make 100% decision digitally and feel comfortable with that. So, but again, the challenge is the cost of that. What's it cost to gather that data? How much time is your inspector spending? Are they doing, you know, how many cars an hour can they perform? And then what does it cost the auction to do that? Yep. That's interesting. What did, uh, what, remember the dealer panel in San Antonio? Um, she compared the condition report to like uh, match.com or something and, I think, you know, the, 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 there, were a lot, there were some choice words about the condition report. And I, listen, I, I, I love the human nature and the camaraderie of the folks because we say, oh, condition reports suck. Well, well maybe, but why? Right? Some, some right condition reports it. suck. And a lot of times I'm going to plug training here. So uh, at conditionreports.com, we provide the NAAA training and certification course, a two-day course to certify and train inspectors. That's a really good first step to have inspectors that know what they, they're doing. Because the, one of the things that buyers complain about is the CR writer doesn't know what he's looking at. And, you know, a lot of times I'm, I'm on the ground inside the auctions because we also do inspections inside the gate at the auctions and outside. And we do see inspectors that have no idea what they're doing. A lot of the inspectors, uh, it's trickle-down economics when it comes to training. You got a guy that was a 4T level, which is what they call inspectors at Mannheim, 15 years ago that watched some videos, and here it is 15 years later, and he's still training, you know, the guys below him on his bad habits. You know, you pick up bad habits over time. And, you know, NAAA has, you know, all these rules that we're supposed to adhere to, but there's really not one auction that has stepped up and said, hey, we're going to train and certify all our inspectors. I know Matt's made a big effort to get all the guys in America's trained and certified. With that, you have at least some uniformity. I mean, everyone's got different software and ways to gather the data. Everyone has their different announcements. Like Matt mentioned earlier, you know, some auctions uh, will allow you to just as is. Other auctions aren't going to let you do that. Um, but the first step that we, we could do, we're never going to have the same software across the board, right? We're a provider, Mannheim, Odessa. But what we, what we can do is at least get these guys uh, on, on a ba base level training and get them recertified every say 12 or 24 months with the and get them up to date and up to speed with the new rules for uh, NAAA. Yeah, that's yeah. my plug. No, and and it's a good plug because <laughs> over the over the COVID holiday, um, you know Brian and his team and and me we we I mean they have such a cool onboarding process and when I saw that I thought wow. You know that that kind of overview lecture thing that I do, I don't that doesn't that doesn't reach to that frontline employee. I don't think enough. And we've always wanted to do something deeper, you know, more more hardcore training. And see, our your your training is fantastic, man. I mean, and I and thank you. Yeah, and we've getting good reviews about it. And and um, you know, you think about a McDonald's employee. They'll put forty hours of training in there before they cook burger number one. You know, and you think about there's no employees anywhere right now. We, everybody's having a hard time finding troops. Yeah. And, you know, there's one thing of getting them. It's another thing keeping them. But having that knowledge and being that engaged in your job and doing a good job uh, with that product. And, of course, you know, the pay comes with it. And CR writing is not just that entry level job anymore. It's more of a career path. And, you know, you think about all the things that it can do. Your training sets that thing in motion in, in the right way you know and like i said i've been hearing nothing but good stuff it kind of well, i appreciate that we've been working hard on it you know one thing that um, i just you mentioned that maybe think about is you know think about this the the level of inspector is going to change soon really soon because we are going to be providing the ob2 reads at some point in time across the board we are going to be doing mechanical inspections okay well now we're doing mechanical inspections 
Now we need a higher level inspector. I mean, not necessarily a mechanic, but. Right. Well, I mean, but you think about that. OBD. Now, I've gone down the rabbit hole of OBD scans and all that, and I think that's a whole different podcast altogether, arbitratable.com. Um, but <laughs> <laughs> um, when you think about, you know, there's a, there's a, there's a thing I'm, I'm dinking around with now, and then we've heard the term survivorship bias. Does everybody know that? I've gone down that rabbit hole of survivorship bias. And just in a quick nutshell, it's in World War II, plans would come back from you know, whatever battle they're in and, and all that. And then these engineers, the mechanics, the technicians, you know, and the pilots, they all look at the plane and go, wow, look at all these bullet holes in these planes. We should probably reinforce all these spots where they've been shot. And somebody went, wait a minute, what about the planes that didn't show up? where they were shot. Maybe we should reinforce where they were shot because these planes made it. Let's look at and try to figure out what those other planes are shot. And that's just one thing. It's, just, it's looking at data for what, it, for what it is and what is not. What are we missing? And that's what I've been doing with this whole OBD thing is there's 65,000 SAE codes that can happen on a vehicle and it's shared by all the OEMs. But then there's over 300,000 proprietary codes. Some of them are hardcore. Some of them are are almost as benign as, uh, you know, your fuel caps lose, you know, and, and, and Brian's point, that is the evolution. And over the years, we've been trying to get rid of certifi certification as it exists and try to redo it and not getting very good traction. But I think this might be the new wave. I've got a question. Um, listening to Brian and Matt <clears throat> back and forth, I, I hear this is an auction trying to solve a problem. So is there, is there a pretty big cost associated with arbitration itself to the auction like it costs the auction money when a car is arbitrated is that yeah oh okay. of course i mean you it... never want to you never want to fight with a customer right never a customer you know and buying dealers one thing they all want is consistency they want that cheeseburger to taste the same from left coast to right coast and that consistency will help them make better decisions on vehicles and less arbitration. Nobody really wants to arbitrate a car. And an arbitration claim costs the auction money. They're already 150 bucks in the hole between the labor of all the people because it takes a village to process that claim, to coordinate a claim. And then if they have to uh, make a decision and they can't mediate a fair outcome, a, a equitable outcome amongst all stakeholders, then at that point, there's gonna be some pretty upset people. and it may cost them a customer. Nobody wants that. There's never anyone that's happy on either side of that arbitration. The second that arbitration is opened, the auction is going negative as far as cost goes. The end result yeah. could be the car goes back to the seller or the car goes back to the buyer. Regardless, the, the auction loses because they a have labor costs, a pissed off customer. In addition to that, if they, it was a pre-sale arbitration where the auction is going to now own that car, they got the policy loss on the resale, which <clears throat> is very common when it comes to inspectors missing structural damage, flood yeah. damage, or, or, you know, so the, these commercial accounts pay for the pre-sale inspection or they hang their hat on the CR. And a lot of times these big commercial accounts say, I, you're not kicking that car back on me. You missed it, you own it. That's exactly right. And, and it's like, uh, you know, that pre-sale cert and as fast as we need to get on those cars and look at them, you know, it's, it's some, sometimes these processes just aren't scalable for every auction location. And part of my job as co-chair for NAAA standard is to make sure that all locations can, can deal with whatever the, 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 the NAAA produces. So if we have a policy that is out of scope of, you know, like for example, postal inspection, that is not an NAAA deal. That's an auction deal. We have a kind of the skeleton, if you would, about what a post sale entails, but that isn't you know bound by any AAA uh, policy. It it mimics the policy as far as guidelines and criteria. But if an auction company can't pull off PSI, then you know we're doing them a disservice by pushing a rule down their throat. You know, but you know pre sale cert and having all that information um, missed by the inspector, yeah, the auction's going to eat that car. And you think about the opportunity cost for every one car that they have to eat. It's at the expense of two cars. And you think about structural damage, that's 2,000 bucks, $2,200, roughly on average from A to B sale loss. Hey, so hey, Matt, can I, can I just go back in time for a second? Um, so you kind of circled back, but also Brian said it. 
the, the, the thing you can't forget, though, is the commercial sellers also have a brand in the lanes that many of them, not all, but many of them care about and curate and manage. So there's some, there's a representative from Avis on the auction block uh, or from lender A and lender B. They're staring these buyers in the face week after week. And if the car is not represented right, um, even though that's the auction's job largely, the, uh, the consigner will also take that uh, very personally and want to make it right as well. So the, the, the pebble in the pond of an arbitration ripples far and wide and, and is expensive, sometimes soft costs as well. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, I think auctions, I mean, one of my first rules when I became a fleet lease manager back in the day was to sustain or improve that relationship, you know, cultivate that following. And you, know, you want a good, strong presence in the lanes or online. Both. And you're right, Joe. I mean, in a minute, something's bad and the seller doesn't want to stand behind it. And it is not so much as the black and white policy stuff. Those are easy. It's the uh, we, you know, we either we had prior knowledge of it and it's probably something that even though you didn't have to disclose that you, you probably should, you know, and I always say, if you have to ask yourself, if you think you should disclose that you've answered your own question, you know, and then as an auction fleet lease manager, my job was to make sure, you know, especially little old Albuquerque, nobody ever flew in Albuquerque to rep a sale. So I was you know, the de facto rep. I wanted to make sure that I was putting Bank of America's best foot forward, you know, to help that or, you know, insert consigner company here. In the event that there's a problem, you know, I had a little bit of uh, grease to help, you know, move the transaction along or whatever the case is. And that's just good for the business, you know, and, and you don't want Jeannie Charamonte coming after you. That's for damn sure. <laughs> well, and I've, I've been on the backside of like, you know, her her wrath and <laughs> we all have, brother. Sweet as a woman as she is. I'm telling you, you know, when you get you go sideways and you get sideways. <laughs> You know, they've got they've got attorneys, they've got, you know, upper management, you know, and sometimes it sucks. It sucks big time when you're um, when you, you do them wrong and, and staying competitive with other auction companies. You know, we it's a constant battle for market share and one cars is not a lot of cars going around right now. So service, my big focus and it's, is, is on service. I want to make sure that, you know, one, we're doing the right things for the right reasons and we're, you know, inspecting them properly and doing all that good stuff, but also any kind of risk mitigation. We're taking steps to, to the best ARB is no ARB. Hey, Matt, um, along those lines, uh, probably a good opportunity to dispel some myths that I didn't even know existed, but one of the uh, chat questions, and, and Jay and Ty, at any time, take your show back. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> we're, we're, by the way, we're loving it. What? And we got two more guests coming in soon, but please, Joe. Just real quick, one of the chat questions or, or comments was, uh, it was kind of two, we were working back to get back, but uh, was there are two CRs, the real CR and the, that the auction has for internal, and then the, the CR that they showed to the public. Uh, and then kind of a follow-up question that said, certain sellers grade their vehicles without taking into account the real CR. To what degree are either of those statements true or false in your experience? Uh, well, Brian, you need to jump on in this one too, but uh, <laughs> part of my disdain for the conditioned report is that influence, you know, and it's, it's, you know, being a CR writer and, and, and loving the job and knowing that, Hey, I'm catching all this damage and describing and prescribing, right. You know, good repair methodologies and the realistic and helping ruggedize disclosures and all that for it to get changed because you want that condition report to look more like a one pager uh, marketing document and the grade to go high, you know, knowing that it's a tough pill to swallow. And does it happen all the time? Yes. Are we going to fix that? We're going to try. Yeah, you get a lot of uh, sellers that are literally uh, standing behind a condition report writer while they're writing a CR and badgering them, you know, saying, well, that's not previous repair. That's acceptable, you know. And what does the CR writer do when the guy's standing right there? You know, one thing we haven't talked about too is that, you know, we have such bad inconsistencies across the board that a lot of commercial clients have reps at the auctions that literally go back, look at the CR and make their own changes to the condition report. And most of the time, 99% of the time, they're not removing things, they're adding things. Well, because, they, because they want to be transparent and they don't want that car to arbitrate. So right. think about that. You got we, this commercial clients were providing this service for at the auction, selling their cars, doing the CR or pre-sale, 
running the car fully, managing the whole process, and their rep still has to go out and walk their inventory and modify their condition reports. That, to me, that's crazy. There's so many competing priorities here because the auctions want to get more cars from that seller. So they want to show higher returns. So there is a little bit of a balance there. Not that an auction would ever do that, but hey, if I can get a few more bucks per unit by maybe uh, ignoring that scratch, I don't know. Yeah, you want me to manipulate my market, my my marketing? Yeah, watch how I write these condition reports. You know, there's this age old thing where we used to say, you know, you're writing them too hard. You know, and that what that means is there's that dollar amount that goes along with that quasi estimate that a condition report kind of looks like. And it looks like a like a dog, you know, and, and they want their car to be shiny. So you kind of give PDR the benefit of the doubt when it's truly a repair or replace situation. Uh, downplaying prior repair or, or not including it because if this if the disclosure doesn't require it then you don't do it and that's that's the you know back to my whole min max thing is like whatever minimum standard we allow becomes the max we'll ever get out of some of these sellers and we want them to be full disclosure but there's levels of full disclosure you know there's levels of frontline ready too so i mean there's there's a lot of gray in there but um, I'm watching the chats too out of my computer on the other side. That's why I'm looking down. But right, uh, Joe's the last three, by the way. So here we got. So I got two freedom. more friends. Camera one. I got two more friends to add to uh, to the discussion. We got Joel Hawk of Pogue Chevrolet and Tim Scatalus of Max Digital joining, and we're going to be live for probably another thirty plus minutes. So, uh, if you feel like you're drinking from a fire hose, you're not alone. It's Tuesday <laughs> nights live on Auto Transport Intel, Better Condition Reports, and Tim is here. Tim, can you see us and hear us okay? Jay, you guys, what's going on, everybody? Ty, good to see you. Hey, Tim. <laughs> Amazing conversation, as always, Jay. Every week. Thank you. It gets better and better, man. Thanks for having me. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, there are, yeah, no, I'm, I'm over here taking notes like, you know, like crazy. Um, Tim, I'm yeah. sorry, uh, Tim, jump, jump I got right some in. questions for you. You're, you're on the dealer side predominantly, correct? Yeah. So you, you're in and out of dealers all the time. They're buying cars. Are they going to the auction? Are they buying online or doing both? No, I mean, like no one is going to the auction. I think they would love to go to the auction. I have like I have one friend who I work with. He's going, but it, it's it's difficult for him to get there. Everybody's online, um, and I I think that's where a lot of this starts. This is this pressure to uh, be transparent in a world where we've been thrust into um, over the last eighteen to twenty four months. Is like, man, the rules are changing so fast. Um, it's it starts with conversations like this. So you know, I mean. Kudos to everybody here. We got to we got to start talking about it, but um, you know, it, it's a whole new world out there. You know? So so it's your dealer guys. You you you're mm -hmm. part of the mix here. Joel also. Joel, hi Joel. Joel, hey, guys, say hello, Joel. We can hello. see you. How you doing? Yeah, yes. I'm doing well. Doing well. Awesome. Thanks for coming. We appreciate oh, it. You're welcome. Glad to be here. <clears throat> uh, Tim. So when they're when they're buying this. Let's, let's give us an example of a dealer that you're with on a regular basis and they're buying cars. Are they, do they buy on one day or are they buying periodically? No, I mean, so, Monday you know, through? the, a, a buying team that I work with out of the, out of the upper Midwest, I mean, they start first thing, eight thirty Monday morning, they get in and they've got their searches set up and they are looking coast to coast, um, online sales. They, they don't really, um, you know, try and be prejudiced to any particular sale. Um, they need inventory, right? And they don't want frontline inventory. We all know that that's real difficult to get right now. So they've, you know, <laughs> they've got to rely on a lot of moving parts. Basically, it comes down to a number, right? To make a financial decision um, in a matter of minutes. And it, it, it's, they're working five, six days a week doing that. So the so you, what you're saying though is is so <clears throat> it, there it's intense. We mm -hmm. got to find cars. Mm -hmm. We're not going to the auction, so we're mm -hmm. buying online, and we're buying from the west coast to the east coast. Yep. Whatever auctions open, we're there and we're trying to buy it. So as we're doing this, 
we don't we want to find the nicest car for the best price is that mm -hmm. how that works that's that right isn't that what, that's that's what a dealer wants okay so then when you're you're online and you're watching this it's fast i've seen it it's it's like wow how do you yeah, do and that? there's a million data points i mean not just the cr right you got to be conscious of the of the car facts what are other dealers selling this car for right what's this going to do in my shop i mean there's a whole not just the cr right to, to consider yeah. Well, so I guess what I'm trying to figure out here is I hear, okay, the condition report is, what is it, one through five? Is that right? Yeah, I think it, at most auctions, right, we get a zero to a five. You're talking about zero the grade? Through, yeah. yeah. Yeah, zero through five. Yeah. Zero through five. So you, you see that, <clears throat> then I'm assuming you, you have to see pictures or you actually physically, you see the car going through the lane. Is that true? You can, yeah, right. Yeah, on simulcast. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a okay. sales channel, though. I mean, <clears throat> the condition report's all pre-sale stuff, right? So if a dealer's doing their pre-sale discovery, they need to make sure that, you know, um, they're looking at the most latest, greatest condition report, of course, all the other condition information. But that live vehicle going through the sale, that's simulcast. It's simulcast. And a guy can actually make a mistake and just buy a car without doing the pre-check, right? That never happens. No, I mean... <laughs> Isn't that the point of the auction though, right? Is to generate excitement. Yeah, and absolutely. Yeah, right. I mean, listen, that's never going to change. I mean, <laughs> that's the point. Yeah, it's um, awesome. It, it's, Your hair is on fire the whole time. It's a right. blast. You know, the the competitiveness, you know, and I mean, um, you know, there's actually a study that we did at, um, at a school I went to and we talked about alpha blindness, you know, and it happens in auctions. You know, it's just people are hell bent on winning. And then they, all the uh, emotion goes through the roof and logic goes down. And next thing you know, they're in the club on a car that they spent way too much money on. Yeah. Whereas Joel. if you're buying online and examining all the data <laughs> without all the emotion. It's still the same. It's still the same. It's still the same. Once that car, you, car goes through the, the lane, you're, you got to make a decision. So. Well, and so simulcast, let's talk about, you know, <laughs> simulcast or fixed bid live online stuff. Um, however you want to call it, but you know, you're relying on, you're not kicking the tires, you're clicking the tires, right? Remember that from 2000, I still play that joke, but it, you're, you're not buying and selling cars, you're buying and selling data. And so that data has to be right. If you're not, you don't, you can't kick the tires literally at the auction. You're going to have to rely on that data. And then when you get the car and you know, and you guys can weigh in on this, how big of a surprise is that? And you think about all your pre-sale processes, you know, you've got the second that car hits the ground, you've got a whole bunch of stuff that you got to do to that vehicle to prep for your sale. You know, and if it's not right, then you got to, oh, you got to kick it out of the process and you got to make a phone call and it's a pain. It's a pain. Uh, it mean it's melting, turning to water? <laughs> Joel, <laughs> I'm curious to know, Joel, Joel's at a Chevy store, Pogue Chevrolet, Winsfield, Missouri. Is that yeah. right? Yes, sir. So you, you buy cars. How do yes, you buy sir. cars? Online. Are you online? online. Mm -hmm. Same buyers are in St. Louis or in the Dallas. So you better you better embrace a little bit of a change since this last 18 months of COVID. Someone call gotcha. it a I'll call it a, a vacation or a holiday. But uh, yeah, it's been it's been it's been difficult. It is. So, so uh, what'd you say, Matt? I was just gonna say that the dynamic has changed everything altogether, you know, and I think you know, um that emphasis on condition information has never been higher in, in its lifetime, ever. So I guess what I'm trying to figure out is, is I've never done it. I would love to see it actually live. Like Joel is at his store and he's online and he's buying cars. I, <clears throat> my, I'm simple. So I'm thinking there's, there's a, a written condition report that you read. Is that right? Yes. Okay. And in that, what does that tell you? Tells you what that human being thought the car without the training, you know, uh, Brian brought up the training and having the standards, but if you're buying a car in the East coast versus the, the West coast, the variance is, it could be a big swing. Um, and it's tough for a buyer to look at that. Well, okay. Because so you, have, you have that one element, which is a, a person that's got either he's having a bad day or he's having a great day and he just wants to roll through a condition report. But I think the writers that I've seen that I've had to deal with, I mean, they, they are good people, um, but mistakes happen because we're, we're human. 
So um, there has to be a little bit of leeway for them. But, you know, when I when I search for a car and, and, and I won't look at a car, say, under a 2.5, but if someone grades it, uh, that car, which really should be a three or a two, I'm actually going to miss that in my search. So I'll never, ever see that car because in my software, I'll search by grade. So, okay. So see, I'm learning here. So you you start your process for Joe, Joel in uh, Pogue Chevrolet is you start by, you said that I'm, I'm only looking for this year, this mile. Is that how you do it? Is that what you're saying? Yeah. yeah. Searching by grade. Mm -hmm. actually, actually, most dealers search by 3.5 or above a lot yeah. of franchise stores. But like he said, you know, if the CR writer uh, wrote that car really hard, um, and it has a lower grade than the car actually is, it's not going to come up in a search. So now that seller has lost access to a huge group of buyers, right? All the franchise guys are gone. Now it's just uh, independents and wholesalers. And that so that's what part of our class is trying to instill in the CR writer exactly how much responsibility they have in this process, making them understand like what you're doing with, with grading the condition of this vehicle has a direct effect on what that seller is going to get for the car, what the buyer is going to pay. I mean, look, these guys are, you know, are talking about, you know, Joel and Tim both buying cars all over the United States. Imagine you buy a car on the West Coast, you ship it to the East Coast, you got $1,500 of transportation, you got a buyer for the car, it shows up 10 days later and it gets there and the car's a toilet and you can't sell it. Now you got, it's a headache. You got to start the arbitration process. You got to ship the car back. Now you got to fight the auction to get reimbursed for your transportation and you'll get it, but you're going to have to send 150 emails to get it. It's just not, it's a terrible experience. You see the chatter, you see the chatter on, you know, talking about pictures only. And, you know, with the standards, we started talking about standardization with pictures, you know, angles and, and all that, you know, Black Widow's got a cool setup plug for them. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> I'm a fan. Um, but, you know, there's, there's, you know, the, the picture's always been supplement to the written word in terms of collision. And you talk about the KSAs of an inspector, you know, they, they're going to have different backgrounds. They're going to have a different way of doing it. Um, and, 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 but it's all contingent on the management telling them this is how you write a CR. This is how, or how hard you're going to write it or not, whatever the case is. And coming from the collision world, you know, we diagnosed the car down to the bone. It took us two days to blueprint a car and you have a technician with you doing tear down and all that. And the auctions inspections, they don't do tear down. There's no dismantling. It's observation only. There's no mechanical, no test drives. I mean, so you think about all those things that there's no, you know, and uh, that it, it puts the buyer kind of at a disadvantage and there's, there needs to be more for them, especially online, to make an informed purchase decision because you really are rolling the dice. Hey, hey so Ty, I got a, I got a question. I want to ask Matt really intelligent answers here. Why are, why are the auctions putting so much pressure on the vehicle? Why isn't there more transparency on the buy, the seller, on the buyer, and maybe even the inspector? I mean, we live in a world of we're talk, it's been said several right. times transparency. Why is there just so much pressure on the vehicle in this well, score there? So you think about the merits of the, the transaction. How do you stay how do you stay neutral as an intermediary? You can't pander to either buyer or seller. So you make the merits of the transaction based on the car. You know, and some people say it's not about the car, it's about the customer. So I get all that too. Now, there are ways to help the buyer and there's ways to help the seller as well to make that transaction complete and no ARB. But in, you know, kind of in a basic way, you have to explain off the merits of the car because that's, every car is different, right? And so if I'm, if I'm a seller and I'm running my 40 cars or whatever I'm running that week, you know, I'm going to set my sale, hopefully certified, good, bad, ugly, and we're right. going to have to wheel and deal, so to speak, on each one. Helping a seller sell better, that's what auctions are all about. Helping a buyer buy better, you know, that, that helps too. But it's, it, it's, um, there's so many different variables out there. And, but if you center it on the car, at least in my opinion, center it on a car, you can, you can, you can help, um, you can help with the education. I mean, I'm not, I'm not going to speak for Joel, but I bet you in his tenure, just like mine, hmm? I've bought enough cars from one guy and I've been burned 
I'm not going back and buying it from that. Yes, guy. absolutely. I've seen I've seen consigners. I've seen um, you know, it rhymes with R Max. You know, I've seen their list of dealers that they don't buy from. Right. You know, and then when there's cars that are short, you're gonna have to kind of go, you know, drop some of that that discipline and, and your risk level goes up and you're gonna have to buy in those lanes. And uh and it is a roll of dice because you never know. I mean, I had a guy his name was Terry, you know, got rest piece Terry, but he, he sold bitsies. Does everybody know what a bitsy is? No. Bits of this, bits of that. Oh. When you bought a Terry car, you better put that sucker in arbitration right away because you're getting a lot of everything, including some junkyard parts. Man, is he gone? You said he's... he's yeah. Like, okay. Yeah, he, he got hit by a, a bitsy car. I'm joking. But yeah. anyway... Um, we're okay. <laughs> now he's gone. But anyway, but, you know, those sellers have such a bad rep you know, nobody wants to buy from them and it'll kill a lane, you know, and then next thing you know, it's the auctions um, image that it's, it's at stake because we're promoting the fact that we're letting this, you know, scumbag run his cars through like that and hurting buyers. And then same for buyers, the buy now, haggle later type methodology, that's, that's alive and kicking. You know, we, I, I would say they're frequent flyers of Barb Airlines Platinum. Mm -hmm. You know, we got to keep an eye on those and that's 8%. On average, 8% of all the auction trans, uh, uh, transactions end up in arbitration. 8%. That's, a, That's lot. a lot. Hey, Tim, I got a question for you. When you're speaking about the vehicle, uh, are you talking about no, not being transparent as far as who you're buying the car from? Oh, so I know the dealer, the, the sellers listed. I'm talking about rating the sellers. I'm talking about oh. rating the buyers. Yeah. Right? Let's I think that, yeah, I think kind of to Matt's point, that comes through a lot of experience in, in buying on a large scale seeing the same sellers every week and knowing who you're getting the bad cars from. But I hear you. If they're selling us, if they're if the auction were to show you a seller's personal information, showing their arbitration rate and, and things like that, that might be, you know, maybe not, might, might not even be legal, but um, I do hear what you're saying. Cause there are, there's some bad sellers, just like Matt said. Yeah. You know, listen, those cars, those bitsy, even those bitsy cars are going to have a home, right? There's an ass for every seat. Oh yeah. OK, um, it's just and you know, maybe I know I'm not, I like buying those cars and I'm going to maybe I'll get them for a little bit less. Um, <laughs> I just think we need to start thinking of this about this a little differently, um, trying to run a new model of buying and selling on old rules. I guess that's my point. And I well, Matt, but Matt, I really applaud you for for some of the thought that you had there. And, and well, I'm glad yeah, you too. Well, and, and that's just it. It's about the car. So here we go, 2021, and we just started a new subcommittee about electric vehicles. Can't sell those the same way we do no. some of these other stuff, right? right. So we're, we're evolving. You know, I'm not, I, I, by no means am I someone that just sits in and we just, we're going to stick with this until the end. It of doesn't time. sound like it. Uh-uh. Oh. Innovate or die. And so sink or sink. Um, you, you've we've got to change with the vehicle technology. And then, of course, you know, uh, substrates on panels. I mean, to Brian's training you know we're not just going to teach you about steel we're going to teach you about aluminum we're going to teach you about you know all the other composites and everything else i mean that's as the car is being born we got to know about that car and be able to um better educate by that and that's again by that seller sellers that uh do care to joe's point he's got a lot of consigner insight um and they want to do the right thing for the car just that small little percent hurts it all I think it's really interesting what Tim's saying here, because in the transport world, if you don't have your own customers, if you don't have the dealer calling you, you end up on a load board. And guess what you get on a load board? You get rated mm. by your performance. And you've been in the business more than I have, but I'm sitting here, I'm thinking, I got to be honest with you. I like what Tim's saying, because if you guys are going to move this whole buy a car from in the lane to online and you can kick out these condition reports and these obds or whatever you guys are talking about why not go ahead and rate the seller we try well, Matt, there's a flip side to that coin too though right how about rating the buyers because there's buyers there's buyers that have high arbitration rates so in arbitration matt matt can definitely comment on this when arbitration comes across your desk with dealer XYZ, who's always arbitrating everything, you know, years ago, there was a, a, a dealer in Texas, I'm not gonna say their name, they had a department dedicated to strictly arbitrating condition reports. Every car that was purchased went through this department, they dissected the condition report, arbitrated, and they always worked to get an adjustment. 
Still. Also, they're sellers. They're sellers that piecemeal cars together that are constantly bubble gumming a car together, you know, uh, and that's all dealer consignment mostly. And our CR writers were having to tell them like, you need to look at a dealer consignment car a little differently than you do a fleet lease because they're trying to cover up a lot of this stuff. So yeah. when that R comes across your desk, if it's seller XYZ, car's going back to you. I don't care what it is. If it's buyer XYZ, we're turning your arb down because you arbitrate 75% of the cars you buy. Yeah, that's just it. I mean, buy now, haggle later. If you know that they're a frequent flyer of our airlines, we're going to, for sure, yeah, you're not going to get a lot of that love. But if you you buy, and, and and that's why I say it shouldn't matter on the how many you buy or how many you sell. But I love the idea of rating. So back in my Mannheim days with OBE, we had a rating system. And uh, we caught so much hell from sellers saying, get that off of my page. <laughs> And we're like, well, it's your own fault, you know, and you think about like the assurance programs with, uh, you know, Deal Shield and the Odessa situation, all that, you know, those are all based on how well of a player you are, you know, and if you're a, you got a high rate for your insurance, it's because you are a lot or you, you get cars back, you know, it's, that's why it's so expensive because you're a high risk. I, I love the like idea rating, but I just, I like having that. A, well, Sorry. say that again. No, I said, I do like that idea of rating both buyers and sellers. Why not? No, you got to rate the seller too. It. I'm all for it. Give me a rating. Yeah. Uh, I don't know where Joel stands on it, but. Well, it's um, interesting because the transporter would like to know as well. Right? Oh, man. Oh, See, the now we're, now we're can go around. Some, yes. Now we're, now we're talking about serious because as a transport guy who's living off of a load board, which isn't my best advice, first choice, but if that's what they're doing, do you know how many times they don't get paid? Yeah, reputation matters, right? Which, know, by the way, I think I we just built this. something here. I'm excited. No, this is crazy. It's already on the books. If you go to my main page on YouTube on Camera One on Auto Transport Intel, um, no, seriously, to, uh, Thursday we already have a show which is pushed back at some of these levels of ratings. Uh, anyways, I don't want to get too far. No, but it's the same topic, and that's where we're all arriving. But yeah. what happens when the rating system's broken? But anyway, well, talk about transparency, though. I mean, there's transparency. I mean, I've been into the, the smaller auctions, and you know the guy that's sending tr trash. I mean, everybody knows him. that guy sends trash, right? But at the same time, now that we've decided, oh, let's do online and let's make it a thing, that guy in California doesn't know that that dude in Missouri is sending trash. He's looking at, yeah. so here's my question, Joel. Do you go to the, the actual written condition report and that's what you count on the five, the rating, or do you really rely heavily, more heavily on photos? I'm trying to figure this I think, out. I think you have to do a little bit of both. It's yeah. kind of like putting two eyes on it um, because those condition reports uh, pictures sometimes will it'll be impossible to see because they got a car right next to it. So, it, you know, I, I think you got to look at both and look at what they're saying is if it's a PDR or if it's a, uh, you know, A, it needs to be replaced. So um, I do rely on what's written as well as that photo. So it's a little bit of both. I got it. Okay. Well, because here's what I, re I think about reality okay the way i was brought up in in car hauling so it's you go hang out with the car dealer he's going to go to the auction four hours early why you know That's let's it. leave it 3 a.m yeah, well hours. we got to go look at the car a day or two before <laughs> yeah yeah. Well, that's that's just the beginning. Okay, that's day one. Then we after the day one sale, then we head over to the next sale, and then we do the walk the entire parking lot. We're looking at every car, and to me, that's your condition report, right? The guy's actually physically going and looking at the car. Now we're going online. We're counting on a, a written CR a rating, and we're counting on pictures. So as as the way that I'm, I'm looking at, it, I'm thinking how as a, as a dealer who's not going to go to the auction, we're trying to take what happens in real life and turn it into virtual. Is that is that what we're doing? It's happening. It's real. It's really it's happening. So I guess I'm trying to decide. It, it sounds like the auctions having a challenge with arbitration. Is that right? 
so it's eight percent but of that eight percent how many are online purchases the challenge we, you know I, that i, I think well, the challenge the big challenge is uh, making buyers feel comfortable with the information we're providing on the condition report and they're if you ask any dealer, if you just had a suggestion box at each auction, first thing you would complain about is the condition reports. There is no, there is no um, transparency. There's no uniformity, and it's it's really hard to trust uh, the information they're providing you. Some auctions are dead on. You know, some some auctions overwrite the cars, and then you receive them, and they're way better than you thought. In fact, Matt, you when you were in arbitration, did any buyer come into Arb and say, hey? I want to arbitrate this car because it's the CR said 2.5 is actually a 4.5 and I owe that seller some money. <laughs> never. That never, never happens. Nobody ever calls me to say hi. Right. So <laughs> I've got physical CR riders on the ground. I tell all my CR riders and through our training process, I say, look, you're a human being, you're going to make mistakes and we, we allow you to make mistakes. And if you do make a mistake, we're, we're going to go over the mistake you made and we're going to, we're going to teach you, you know, uh, you know, how to not do that again. Right. But we don't, rip them a new, you know, ask for making an error, you, you know, move on. The options that really tear into their inspectors end up overriding their cars because an inspector won't get in trouble for overriding, especially on commercial vehicles. Because like I said, no one goes into arbitration and says, hey, this, this low CR grade car I bought, it's actually a lot nicer than it, it appeared to be. Yeah. <clears throat> well, I mean, what about the what full dis what's full disclosure you know and i think you know going back to you know appropriately writing the vehicle condition report you have to rely on the estimatic style of 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 an estimate you know a den defender is going to have a couple different outcomes you're replacing it or you're fixing it you know um how you fix it well ultimately there's some severity in there but if you think about the, the auto grade because there's a mechanical backup not mechanical there's a manual grade that you can do to the vehicle as well, but price doesn't, um, labor rates can vary from shop to shop is the best way to say it, right? And um, contract rates with the consigner may change things. So it does not affect the grade. What does affect it is the, you know, the major moderate and minor columns that go into that severity and what have you. And it gets pretty pretty technical when you really start digging into that, that auto grade. And I'd say 90% of it's, dead on but it but again it boils down to the knowledge skills and abilities of that inspector and if they can write without that influence outside influence of downplaying or om omitting because i mean it it could be a real pain um as a writer back in the day i'd have fleet companies uh lot managers would come in from say rental returns and half of my day was politicking between We'd go walk cars because whatever was above their their deductible their 500 dollars deductible they had to pay so i had to argue with these lot managers on dents and scratches and whatever you know and then um mediate some happy outcome and it that that was one location you know and at the time we had 80 locations so that's 80 different opinions and then multiply that times 10 inspectors each it gets out of hand quick so i love the idea of, of high quality images um, some of these images can do the talking for us, but there's, you know, there's a lot of stuff that you can't see from a camera, unfortunately. And, you know, yeah, there's underbody cameras, there's, you know, the undercarriage kind of stuff. There's the, uh, AI that's coming out and who knows? I mean, there might be some really cool stuff coming out sooner rather than later. Well, I'll put my black widow hat on right now. And obviously with our 4k cameras, we're constantly detecting damage through our AI. And I think that as we do thousands of cars or thousands of pictures a day um, of vehicles, that AI is only going to get better. And I yeah. think, and I think what what the neat thing about that is, obviously we have consistent angles, and that's the one thing we can't get with a human. Um, that component of of AI of that 4K image added on to someone's condition report, it only, it learns itself. There's no, hey, I had a bad day or I just missed something. It's a second eye to get on that car. And I think on the Black Widow side, me, you know, if me put my uh, dealer hat on, I'd feel more comfortable. Obviously I'm, I'm, I'm a player of Black Widow, um, but I think that AI is what 
we're kind of missing. And I think five years, in, in five years, we're going to look back and go, why didn't we just put more time and build that model better so we can get a consistent photo? Um, and can just, you know, as far as the, the uh, damage, it can detect that. And, but it's going to require more and more. We're getting better every day. So um, as we take the pictures, it's only getting better. It's, you know, everybody talks about AI and it's real. It works. Oh, yeah. I love it. I love the idea. Um, you have an outside the gates solution. You can win this game. Yeah. Um, put them at Starbucks, I guess. <laughs> but, uh, uh, you know, you talk about outside the gate and inside the gate is that takes care of the transporters. It, it gets shot before it goes in, gets shot oh, yeah. before it goes out. And now there's no more pointing. You know, it's, it's a checkpoint. And Authentication, accountability. Transparency. Perfect transparency okay so joe please joe brian this is an opportunity i want to talk about transport cr app for a minute can we do that okay. sure absolutely um so go ahead brian. so uh we got together with auto ims and tried to solve a bit of a problem when it comes to vehicle transport and documenting damage um we knew a transporter is not doesn't want to spend you know 15 minutes to a complete kiss report um but we thought it was important to document uh, or at least have an accountability along the chain of custody. So when a vehicle is picked up using the application that's, that's deliverable over the air to a cell phone, it's on the uh, app store. Um, they can take a few pictures of the vehicle, document minor damage, how many keys the car has, any personal property, publish the inspection within about three minutes, geotags the car location it was picked up and the timestamp. And then when they drop it off, they take a couple of pictures of where they dropped it, geotags the timestamps where the car has been dropped off, and then it moves into the auction. So at that point, now we know exactly the condition of the car was picked up, when it was dropped off, what time, where. Um, so if there's any damage that occurs outside of that window, we know who to blame and, and the transport is covered in that scenario. Mm. That information then flows through auto IMS. So a lot of consigners, a lot of especially commercial consigners can see the condition of their vehicle a lot sooner than they can see it now. because. If you think about it, when a car gets repossessed, it sits at a repo yard, they don't really know the condition of that vehicle or know really where to send it. Um, with something like this, we know when it's been picked up, get a better idea of like, hey, that car needs to go to Copart or, or you know, Odessa or Mannheim or whoever. And sometimes they do have some initial insight, but again, it's just the links in the chain of custody. So we spent the whole show talking about the auction CR, which is kind of the, the sun, you know, in the universe it's for most of us. Uh, but as you, but, you know, especially with you guys in the auto transport world, I mean, you go back, the repo agents are now often having to take a similar type of cursory inspection, uh, again, to protect them and to show the condition of the car as they received it. Uh, and that helps cover the transporter who then wants to cover themselves. Uh, and then the auction gets the car. And if there's mystery damage, they often end up getting, they often end up holding the bag. And so the auctions really kind of got this, could uh, this discussion going, but I think everyone loves be having you know digital access to potentially all three of those inspections. You know, repo agent, transporter, auction, uh, to see what happened along the way. Yeah, another aspect I didn't touch on is because it's geotagging the inspection. If a transporter goes to an auction and has to pull that vehicle out, if they have pullers at the auction or if the driver's got to go in and retrieve the vehicle, they can actually inspect the vehicle on the auction property before it comes out of the gate. So if there's any lot damage, now you're protecting your customer and yourself because you're picking that vehicle up, say it was damaged on the lot. Now we got a geotag inside the gate. We know it was caused before it left the auction and it's not on the transporter. When the vehicle gets dropped at the, at the buyer's location, you can look at the CR and see the damage wasn't there. Look at the transporter's condition report and see that the damage was there and know that it was a lot damage issue and have the auction reimbursed for that instead of putting it on the transporter. Brilliant. Oh, brilliant. I love it. Here's yeah. the, uh, the, so if you're a car hauler and you're watching this and you're like, I thought I was going to talk about trailers and trucks and I just need to go pick up some cars. What? Okay. This we're talking about an auction. This is one little bitty small piece, right? Actually, I mean, it's a big part of the auction, but 
there is so much going on. So when you go to the auction, you go to the guard check and you ask for the gate pass and you get the run around and you think life sucks. Then you finally get the gate pass. Then you finally find the car. and Oh, it's in post sale inspection. Right. What the heck is post sale inspection? I just bought a tr truck and trailer. And I want to get the car and take it somewhere. You can't. Right. So I, the takeaway here for the car hauler people in the audience is know everything that you can. I mean, I'm, I've been doing this 20 years. I just learned a lot tonight, right? Know what's going on behind the scenes as much as you can. It will make your life a lot easier, I promise, when you go to an auction or a dealer. Because you got dealer guys here, Tim, Joel. you got auction guys, Brian, Joe, Matt. These guys are telling you stuff that can help you navigate through the auction. The auction is a my favorite place. You guys know I'm there every Friday, right? I'm hanging out in the transport parking lot. There's reasons because there's business. There's life. It's amazing. It's powerful. So thank you, Jay, so much for this show. Well, you learn thanks. more about, about auctions. I like the way you wrap that up because it is what we're trying to do is find a way to put industry incomers in front of the eight ball instead of behind it. Yeah, and if you can't tell, there's a lot going on here. I mean, there really is. Oh, my God. This auto IMS, I want to get with Joe, Joe sometime and talk more about this because this chain of custody deal, uh, I first heard it was Scott Cole. And right, then I was thinking of they, Scott Cole, too. Yeah, then we hear it again tonight, and I'm like, there's something here, and it, it really is important. And it, the consigner, right, these, these big fleet companies that are, you know, whether it's at a repo yard or it's at a parking lot, wherever it is, we go to pick it up. We take it to the auction. Man, wouldn't it be cool if this this all just went real smooth, right? It would be so well, sweet. So well, and Joe, it's happening. I, I like the way, Joe, you talked about, you know, the sun as, you know, in the constellation of the world. I've never understood how the, the driver does all this work to do a vehicle inspection, and as soon as the vehicle gets to whatever the point B was, like I said, just throws it away and throws that piece of paper away, and it, it, it makes no sense. And so to see the dots begin to connect uh, with all the thought and the change that goes into, it's amazing. It's, ama it's an amazing uh, journey. I'm glad that we're getting to see now where we're trying to go and i'm glad thank you guys for being a part of that discussion i really appreciate it thanks for having us you, Jay. and before we forget okay so uh what we're gonna do is on linkedin we're gonna share um a screenshot of everybody here so um i call it the family photo you know when you're on you're at the water park and you're all in the boat together and everybody waves at the camera so this is the uh this is the shot so um what I've also done is decided I, 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 I'm I going to hit the applause button. During the applause is when the photographer is going to take the picture, okay? So I don't know if you wave or, you know, you give a thumbs up or whatever you do. Thank you so late. much for being a part of the ride and letting us take that family photo. <laughs> Thanks, Matt. It was really good to have you and Joe, all of you, everybody here. But just It's really cool. Really is. Thanks for your time, that, and we know yeah. that's that's precious. So thank you. Yeah. 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 Great. Thank you all. Thank you so Let's much. We'll see you at the next Bye -bye. show. Let us know how we can help. Thank you guys. And that will end the meeting. And that meeting is over. And everybody that jumped in the live chat, thank you so much. Um, that was a really interesting um, conversation. I knew it would be. And at the same time, you know, is there a is there is there a period at the end of that sentence or paragraph or page? Um, but I know I've got my notes, and I, hopefully you're taking notes too. Um, and I love the questions, and thank you, Vance Mattis. Great show, thank you so much. Really appreciate it. Um, lots of well, I'll tell you what. Here's what I'm proud of is that I've seen, like I said, I think before the show is I've seen a lot of conversations about condition reports and i am quite sure that the conversation that i just witnessed and got to be a part of was more in depth than the usual conversation 
Um, and so I'm really proud to be the host of that. I want to thank everybody that joined the show tonight. Thank you, Ty Thompson, Matt Arias. Thank you, Joe Miller, Brian Shear. Thank you, Joel Hawk, Tim Scatalis. Thank you for being a part of the show tonight and this discussion. I sure do appreciate it. I also, of course, I want to thank Vlog, Virtual Asset Tracking, Superflow Systems, Murphy Auto Transport, Auto IMS, and, of course, I want to thank Black Widow. Uh, it was great to have Joe of Auto IMS and Joel with Black Widow on the show tonight. If you've got something that you think needs to be discussed on Auto Transport Intel, send in the news. Send me an email, autotransportintel at gmail.com. And I also, I want to thank everybody for those super chats of participation. Ty, Cars on the Move, Chris Chamberlain, a run with NYC Traffic, Mark Superflow Systems, and also Super Dispatch. Thank you guys so much for your participation and your Super Chats. Um, next week, we are going to be live at Automotive Logistics. We've got that going on tomorrow. Don't miss tomorrow, noon Central Time, live with Black Widow. We have the new features release. And I'll tell you what, I'm going to share that link so that you are, you're, if you're subscribed, make sure you're subscribed and that you click the notification bell so that you never miss a video. But Black Widow live event tomorrow, there's the link, I just put it in the live chat. So join us for that. And that means we gotta get some sleep so we can start it up again. So I'll tell you what, I'm gonna run that car hauler here in a second. Thank you all so very much for joining me tonight. This is Auto Transport Intel. This is the car shipping business channel. This is Tuesday Nights Live. We're live, but if you miss the show, check it out on demand. Get the podcast. If you have any questions, let me know how I can help. Here comes the car hauler. Stay safe. Join us tomorrow for the Black Widow live event, new features release. Thanks, everybody. Good night. Take care. Peace, and we'll see you soon.